We are live. Welcome to episode 33 of the High Slot Podcast, brought to you by producer Mass Music Radio. I'm here today, as always, with the boys, Bob Deuce, a.k.a. Oh. Buddy the Elf. How are we? <laughs> Snipsky, a.k.a. Santa's Helper. Yes, sir. And myself, Andrew Coco Curry, a.k.a. Santa Claus, old Saint Nick himself. Happy holidays, fellas. How we doing? Feeling fantastic. A little itchy under this beard right now, but we're going to get through it. <laughs> How about you, Vinny? Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. I'm doing, <laughs> I'm doing well. Happy to be with the boys once again and ready to talk some puck. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this, this beard's not helping out, Bob. It's definitely going to be a grind here tonight. But uh, we, we do it for the fans. We do it for the listeners. You know, getting in the holiday spirit, as you can tell. I was decorating the house this week, got the tree all set up. I'm ready to roll. Fa- Franny's first Christmas. And I don't know if you boys have heard the four stages of life. Have you guys heard about them? Uh, what is it? Enlighten so, us. So the first stage, you believe in Santa. Then you don't believe in Santa. Then you become Santa. And then finally, you end up looking like Santa. Four stages of life. Nasty. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. I mean, you already skipped to the fourth stage, it seems like. Looks like, yeah, I did skip a stage. Yeah, I, yeah, you I skipped absolutely it. did. <laughs> I'm playing two roles. I, I am Santa and look like him tonight. All right, um, rumor, ha- huge epi- <laughs> rumor has yeah. it Coco shaved this morning. I did. I did. And look what happened. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we got a huge episode today for all you beauties out there. We're going to start with a little hockey talk, do our mass high school hockey roundup, and then we're going to do a fancy draft of the best Christmas movies of all time. Finally, we'll finish with the weekly gambling corner, give you some picks. Hopefully, we'll put some money in your pocket. You boys ready? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Let's do it. All right. Hockey talk this week. Uh, The granite grind is going to be postponed for the foreseeable future. Uh, The college is on winter break. Therefore, there are no scheduled games during that time. Uh, We'll keep you all posted after the break when the boys return to action on January 21st. Anything you want to add about the granite grind this week, Bob? No, just uh, everyone go home and uh, enjoy the holidays. That's all I got to say there. Yeah, go spend some quality time with your family, rest up, and we'll be back in action soon. All right, a little NHL recap from the last week. We'll start with the hometown guys, Boston Bruins. So since our last episode, the Bruins have gone 3-0-1, beating the Islanders 4-3 in a shootout. Then they lost to the Kings 3-2 in a shootout, uh, beat the Jackets 4-2, and then finished with a 7-3 victory over the Florida Panthers on Monday night. Boys, what are the thoughts on the Bruins lately? They're just unbeatable at this point. Uh, even when they shoot themselves in the foot and just take a bunch of stupid penalties and just even let up like a bunch of just like – like the other night, what was it, 4-0, they blew that lead. And they, they can just – they can like do anything. Like they can – they battle adversity like it's nothing. Um Blown leads, being down or anything like it's crazy. They're like seven, I think they're seventeen oh one two when scoring the first goal. So it shows how dominant they are, and they're just rolling, rolling. Uh yeah. I mean, the Bruins are definitely uh, very solid when obviously playing. Uh, they they're crazy good. Like I I just like I'm kind of pessimistic about them. Uh, just coming back, like they they're not. I I just can't buy in yet, unfortunately. Uh, they're unbelievable, but it's just uh, they blow. They almost blew the lead last night, and I just they're choke artists. Sometimes I just can't. I can't buy in sometimes. But uh, yeah, they, yep. Yeah, Snipsky. You know, I'm I'm not too far from you on that. Uh, I know it's it's the holidays, and we want to be positive of everything. But um, I, I'm a little negative about the Bruins this week. I think they've looked uh, a little sloppy lately. Not gonna lie. Um, it's crazy even saying that, considering they went three zero and one last week, and they just continue to pile up wins. But they didn't look great against the Islanders. Uh, honestly, they were lucky to win that game in a shootout. Uh, had a lackluster performance against the Kings, ended up losing that one, even though it was tight. They beat the Jackets, who the, the Jackets are awful. I mean, anyone can beat the Jackets. Uh, and Swayman scoring that game was wild, uh, almost scoring, so I should say, w- yeah. was wild. He went for the empty net and just missed it. <laughs> that was probably the highlight of the Bruins this week. 
Um, and then last night they almost blew that four goal lead against a against a banged up Panthers team. So yeah, the wins are wins, but the defense is, is scaring me a little bit. They've been pretty leaky defensively at times. I, I still think that we need to go out and get a solid top four stay at home defenseman before the trade deadline comes around. It, it's been the offense carrying us right now, clicking on all four lines. You know, you love to see that. And uh, the goaltend has been solid too, Swayman and Allmark. Uh, both holding their own. It, it's really just the defense, in my opinion, that's uh, their only weakness. But, yeah. but they keep winning, so I, I guess that's all that really matters. Yeah, the defense, they need a new defenseman like in the trade deadline. They're talking about getting Taves. I don't think we need a fourth-line center that bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're going to put – I mean, that that looked good, like uh, having Taves on the fourth line. But it's like I I just – we need a defenseman uh, – the goaltend and all has been the all star for us. Like I think yeah. he's been our rock. That's big, big reason why we've been playing so well. I think and protecting. He, he should be leads. the Vesna favorite yeah. right now, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, all has been the best there is in the league. Yeah, he's playing unbelievable. And the other thing I want to touch on too. So like you know how like our close games was the Kings and the Islanders. The only reason because those two teams are really defensively sounded teams, and we don't really like if you see that like that's like a playoff caliber like play style and that's what we need to like really start harping on is like playing those type of teams and really getting our feet wet for those type of games those close nitty-gritty games because the type of games are going to go like ot double ot and playoffs you know what i mean but like the thing is like we played down to like teams levels too so like the panthers last night yeah went out four four nothing quick ones four quick ones but at the same time we played down to their level and just like let them back into the game and stuff like that took some stupid penalties but pa, um, pasta took a really dumb penalty like he just like went hit to the head all that kind of stuff so like that that kind of stuff needs to get nipped in the butt monty needs to like tell the guys like hey like we we have a scoring goals in bunches but we, but we can't be shooting ourselves in the foot there we, we gotta we gotta like keep on playing high intensity hockey and then like, keep our foot on the gas because that's what it seems like we just kind of get complacent and let teams back in it yeah i mean it you can't complain really too much when you're winning but just like on a confidence level, I'm not very confident in this team right now. If 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 this was playoff time, like next week, I wouldn't be very confident because we could get a shit draw first round um, and be one and done. You know, yeah. like we get a top caliber team, even someone like Tampa who hasn't been playing too well, like Toronto. I, I don't want to play them. Um, like, yeah, we're, but we're beating up on the bad teams, which I mean, it's good for the standings. And being, being first in the league, we're going to come with the target on our back too. So, uh yeah, I'm, I'm going to be a little worried come playoff time. Yeah, I'm in on some L's for them. I, yeah, it's just – I know they're getting lucky too and they're winning a lot, but it's also – they got to battle some adver- like real adversity when they're like losing a couple straight and then they need to bounce back, you know, because say if playoffs come around and you start – that's when you start losing, it's going to be tough. Yeah, I, I'd honestly, I'd rather see them lose like three, four, five in a row right now and yeah. like, you know, know what it's like when, for times to be tough and see how they respond to that because they haven't had anything not go their way this year. It's been, you know, everything's, they've gotten all the bounces, they've gotten everything, they've gotten the calls. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see when they're like really staring in the face of adversity what they're made of. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I just at? can't, I'm looking at your, your face in the camera, Bob. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> it's just comedy. You just look look mad serious with that thing on. Yeah, I'm the buddy of the it's elf. All business over here, yeah. Snapsky. Yeah, dude. Like, I, I know we're, we're wearing this shit, but this is well, this is a podcast, dude. Ah, uh, it's comedy. Yeah, well, yeah we're, we're fucking serious on this. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anything else you guys want to add about about the bees before we move on? Uh, I had a thought, but I I, I lost it. Then he uh, <laughs> oh, did I, oh, blame me. Then he derailed yeah. us. <laughs> I was gonna say something. I saw him laughing and just. <laughs> <laughs> I have to like block you guys on the camera here. <laughs> All right. Um, next topic. So last Saturday, the head coach for the Philadelphia Flyers, John Tortorella, made a bold decision to make the team's leading scorer, Kevin Hayes, a healthy scratch in their contest against the New York Rangers. Uh, the Flyers lost to the Rangers that night, 6-3. to three. Boys, what's your thoughts on the decision by Torsi? I think it's fucking hilarious. I honestly, <laughs> kind of, like, at first, I was like, wait, why? Like, you know what I mean? He's the leading scorer and all that. But also at the same time, I was like, he's just sending a message. Because maybe Hazy did something, overslept like a practice, like was late to a meeting, you never know. Like, there might be something really, like, behind the scenes. But 
low key like that like made me kind of like more Tortorella more because how much of a fucking savage he is. Uh, I don't know. Torts is kind of a clown for it. Uh, Hazy's like the best player on the team, but he's not having a bad year or anything. Uh, probably on the minus side, but like I don't, I don't know what he's trying to send a message or something. But I, I just, I don't really agree with it, especially when it's your best player. Uh, he got pumped that night too. It didn't like really make a difference. And I don't know, kicking the ass for the team, they're they're not making the playoffs. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's laughable what's going on over in Philly this year. I, I mean, does it surprise me? No, not one bit. I mean, torts is always going to torts. But uh, this honestly made me question uh, the legitimacy of Tortorella as a head coach in the NHL uh, nowadays. I, I just I don't see how you bench a guy who's making seven mil a year and is leading your team in score. And like, I just well, I don't know what message that's sending to the rest of the team. Like, I guess no one's safe. That that could be the message, but. I know coaches make decisions all the time and they try and rally the team and all that, but I just think this wasn't it. And as a coach, you have to put your best lineup out there each night that's going to win. And I don't see how he can justify his decision by benching the team's really only productive player. Uh, I know Torts has been a very successful coach in the past, but he hasn't done much lately. And I think every team that he's coached in recent memory has been a complete dumpster fire. And the current situation in Philly is really no different. Yeah, like, I think just because his, like, resume as a coach, like, yeah, obviously he's getting these jobs, but at the same time, like, he just has that old school mentality that doesn't really, like, resonate with the rest of the league and all that, but yeah. I don't know. He's I one think, of a kind. I, I think mean, him yeah. doing that, though, like, yeah, like, doesn't make sense, like, leading score, like, your team sucks, like, you, like I agree with that, Coco, <laughs> you, you want, like, the best roster out there, the best lineup out there. But I, I honestly like when I read that, dude. I giggled like a little girl. I was like, "That was." Yeah. I'm like, "That's so fucking funny." It's it just so torts, dude. Like, but yeah, bullheaded move. Like overall, though, I'd say if it was like you're you were like a good team and like your best player was not producing, maybe yeah, you set them down. Like, but they are complete opposite of that. Yeah, it, it's a slap in the face to Hazy. I mean, it, he was he was upset about it. He had some words to say. Uh, Keith Yandel, yep. close friend of his, also had some words to say about it. Um, you know, you know, we know Philly sucks. We we know they're terrible. Um, you know, Torts coming in wasn't really given a good hand here. Uh, but I, I think he's just making things worse. That they're becoming just like a circus, like a laughing stock. Um, and like, how are they going to bring in free agents and bring in guys? Like, no one's going to willingly want to come play for the Flyers if Torts is their coach. Right. It, yeah. it, there's not many guys in this league that that would do that. Not and star I, I players. Think, you know, he, he, yeah. I mean, he's got that old school mentality. Like, I know it, it's been proven to work in the past, but I, I think he's going to kind of get with the program here. I mean, it's 2022, almost 2023. It, it this just isn't what coaches do nowadays. And if you ask me. I think Torts needs to go back to the broadcasting booth. I don't think he should be anywhere behind the bench for any team in the NHL. What, so he can make a ridiculous take saying that Connor McDavid is not built for playoffs? <laughs> like that I'd kind of stupid shit? Listen to that, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Dude, when he said that, that I mean, was crazy. A, like, yeah, yeah I mean, and then he proceeded he, to go to the conference finals. By himself. Like yeah. He just like single-handedly <laughs> yeah, like brought it. Him and Drysaddle just both just like put him, put him on their backs. It's like, yeah, he's not built for playoffs. Yeah. I, I mean, Torts it's just a walking headline everywhere he goes. He's going to attract the media. He's going to attract your attention. But I'm kind of just sick of his shit at this point. And I think a lot of other people around the league agree. So I wouldn't be surprised if he's a one and done experiment in Philly. Yeah, it's good. especially how bad they are this year, too. They might give him like another year or something. I can see him do one more year. Yeah. I mean, they started off hot this year. I was like, damn, maybe like this was the move. Bringing in torts, you know, boot camp style. They, they were scrappy, but. Uh, as of late, they, they've they've been pretty garbage. So, you know, kind of just is what it is in Philly. Getting ran to the ground, yeah. though, only, like, works so, <laughs> for so long. You know what I mean? Like, they're probably all burnt yeah, out. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that, that message gets stale. And I, I just kind of wake up every day thanking myself and thanking the Lord above that I'm not a Flyers fan. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. No thanks. All right. Uh, let's talk about another team in the complete – opposite direction of the Flyers right now uh it's the Carolina Hurricanes so after a slow start to the season the Canes have worked their way into second place in the Metropolitan Division currently riding a five-game win streak and are 9-0-1 in their last 10. 
Uh, this was a team everyone in the hockey world was big on prior to the season uh, to make a cup run, and they're finally playing like that top-tier team we all expected to see. So, boys, are the Canes officially back? Yeah, I mean, they they pretty much had a new like defensive structure, like decor, like Brent Brand's coming in and all that. So, obviously, it was going to take them a little bit to like really just like get kicked in the gear. They had a good start of the year and all that, and then like kind of whatever had like the little woes, but. Like, they're pretty much at the same forward core and all that. And uh, two really good goaltenders and Frederick Anderson and Auntie Ronta. So, like, that, that team was – honestly, like, I always knew that team wasn't going to be a bad team by any by any means. But, yeah, they, I think they're back for sure. And, uh, yeah, what do you think, Vinny? Yeah, the Canes are buzzing. I was just watching them smoke the Devils 3 nothing earlier tonight. And, Bob, you, you forgot to mention someone else – uh, the real goal, starting goaltender and Peter Kochekov. Oh yeah, he's playing well. Too. Nine and oh, one yeah. in fourteen games. Kid's got a two point oh one goals against, nine twenty three save percentage. I think the Canes finally found their guy, and they got stout defensemen in front of him and a high powered offense. If they get a goalie that can take over a game, they'll be a force to be reckoned with playoff time. Yeah, no, Snipsky, I agree because. Look, looking at the Canes this year, they've definitely t- taken it back offensively um, compared to last year. I mean, this year they're 24th in the league in goal per game, 26th in power play percentage, and 29th in shooting percentage. So offensively, their their production's been limited, but defensively, you know, they're as sound as they get. They're fifth in the league in goals allowed, first in shots on goal allowed per game. And, and Snipsky, you said it, a big part has been their stud rookie goaltender, Pierre uh, Kochekov with three shutouts on the year. I think he's leading the league in that category. And, you know, after Freddie Anderson went down with an injury again, similar to last year, um, Kochekov just completely has taken over the blue paint for the Canes. I mean, we saw him in the playoffs. You know, we saw flashes of him last year. I knew this guy was going to be a future starting goaltender, but did I think he was going to be playing at this level? No, but it, it's been damn impressive um, how good he's been so early on in his career. He looked pretty good off, against the he, Bees he in that um, playoff series. Looked looked really good against he us. Did, yeah. Yeah, those Russian goalies, uh, man. You know, like, I thought we were going to light that guy up. I was like, oh, we're down to their third string goalie. Like, Canes are in trouble. We're going to light him up. And he kind of stood on his head and, you know, ended up winning him that series. Yeah. But, yeah, having him having him full season this year, he's been, he's been lights out. And that decor in front of him is a big part. Brent Burns, Jacob Slavin. Brady Shea, Brett Pesci all holding down the blue line. I mean, you love to see that if you're a goaltender. Uh, but the Canes, they've kind of developed this new style of defense, Bob. I think you mentioned it. It's like a defense-first mentality, and they're just wearing other teams down, man, and they're grinding out these low-scoring wins. And it, it's credit to Rod Bod. He's one of the premier coaches in the league, and he definitely made a coaching adjustment, and it's paying off for the Canes big time this year. Yeah, he skinned a couple Elks oh, in the locker room. I was going to say, he's Got been skinning going. a lot of Elks lately, a lot of wins. Yeah, dude, I told you, he had 82 Elks in his uh, freezer just waiting for him to get fucking skinned. <laughs> I, I heard he was skinning an Elk for every block shot the boys had. Oh, Jesus. So he, might, he must have like two, just- 200 in there. <laughs> There's just a pile of them on the in the middle of the locker room when the, after the game when the boys come in. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's how you know it was a good night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the defense is blocking way more shots than he intended, like for the season's like shit. And then he like he has to go out like during the Christmas break and like go kill more. Elk. Yeah, he takes a leave of absence. Yeah, he, he goes back to his cabin for for, for um Christmas break. And Stabbing kill. cabin. Oh jeez. <laughs> Yeah, you know he's got one of those. <laughs> but yeah, what's what's been even more impressive, impressive too about the Canes is uh, one of their top forwards, Sebastian Ajo, has been out recently, and they're still you know on a five game heater, and they still have yet to um, add Max Pacioretty to their lineup, who they got in the off season. He's been hurt with that Achilles injury um, all year. Who knows when we're gonna see him? But hey, if they can slip him into the lineup, and maybe he's on your third line, not too bad. Patchy on the fo- on the third or oh, fourth line. Yeah, I wouldn't then he's a third. And then uh <laughs> Koki and Nemi, right, would be on the third yeah. line too. Like that kid having that kid on the third line, that's nasty. Yeah, and he um yeah. he brings a lot to the table. Like he can score he doesn't really score in bunches, but like he has like just like that presence, you know what I mean? Like he just always in the right spot. When he played for the Canadians in that uh Stanley Cup, like COVID year, right? Yeah. And then 
Carolina swiped them right after because they couldn't sign them because their cap was too high. Well, Cana- no, well, dumb Canadians. Well, the Canadians in the Stanley Cup final, like they just like Okanami played one game in the Stanley Cup final, like didn't. Produce. Oh yeah, he was a scratch, yeah, and right? they scratched in the rest of the finals. Yeah, and, and they ended up losing. Stupid. It was so dumb, and then they got rid of him. Then he went to the Canes, and now he's pretty um, playing pretty well over there. So suck on that yeah. Montreal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> typical bitches. Montreal just fucking up a good thing. But, you know, the Canes, in my opinion, I think that's going to be a scary team come playoff time. But definitely a team I don't want to see in the yeah. playoffs because Rod the Bod, he's gearing up the boys for another cup run this year. And, and boys, I might be turning into a Caniac the more I start talking about this team. They're, they're, we're crackheads and Caniacs. They're loaded. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're all over the place. Yeah, but, I mean yeah. – Canadian, I mean the uh, Hurricanes knocked us out last year, and they're the gonna, past two years. Yeah, and they're gonna they're gonna come for they got our number, I guess. So Bruins, like they play a tough style of hockey. I want to see the Bruins step up and start banging bodies. Hell yeah, yeah. That, that definitely wouldn't be a good matchup for us. I, I would, I'd be pissing myself if Remember I remember when S- the Canes. Snatchnikov. <laughs> snatched uh Lindholm's soul and that, oh it, uh, that was Don't like dead on arrival that, <laughs> it was a dead body on the ice Gio, uh, yeah Dude, don't don't even bring that up that was that was racist I had erased man. that from my memory until now <laughs> that was racist and he should, should never have said that uh snatch a dog yeah he's nasty I love snatch the cough told Lindholm hey tell your boy to keep his head up yeah right yeah right <laughs> All right, um, moving on here. So I don't know if you boys have seen this yet, but in last night's game between the Islanders and Avalanche, Colorado defenseman Kale McCarr was oh, wheeling yeah. around the net with a puck, and he appeared to get tripped up by Islanders forward Matt Barzell. The ref had initially raised his arm, indicating that there was going to be a penalty, but McCarr then made a gesture towards the ref, indicating that, no, he was not tripped, and he just lost an edge. The referee then rescinded the original penalty call and announced that there was no penalty for tripping. <laughs> I've never seen another player talk his way out of a penalty for his own team. So is, is Kale McCarr just the ultimate good dude of the NHL? Like, what was that? Hand him the lady bang right now. <laughs> yeah, right. The dude, that's he like the, wants it so bad. <laughs> dude, he's the man of the people. Kale McCarr can do no wrong. <laughs> like, that was crazy. When I saw that shit, I was like, you got to be kidding me, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah. Dude, you can, like if I fell down and I saw like the uh, like whatever the like the ref's hand up, I'd be like, oh, I'm bleeding too. Like I'd bite my tongue. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, he caught me up high too, dude. <laughs> yeah, I mean, whoever hammered the sportsmanship line for that game really made out on some Cash money. That yeah, they caught. Yeah, yeah, that that never happens. The sportsmanship line usually doesn't hit. But, I hammer it every night, dude. I'm like yeah. negative. But uh, no yeah, lines. um, that's tough. I mean, he. <laughs> I would, if I was his teammate, I'm competitive, so I would have, like, if I was Kale McCarr, I would have shut the fuck up and just, like, taken the peeper. peeper. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, if I'm guys on that team, I'm, I'm giving a side eye. I'm like, yo. Like, yeah, but it's Kale McCarr, Norris yeah, yeah, no, like, no, I know, but, like, no, I get he's, na- no, I get <laughs> yeah. he's nasty, but at the same time, it's like, bro, like, they they ended up get, losing the game, right? Didn't they? They've been losing they a won, lot. They won one nothing in a shootout. In Jesus. that game? In that game? Yeah. 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 Oh, because he said he was like, "Oh, at least we got a point." I thought he meant like we split. Yeah. They or maybe split. They, I don't know. Maybe they lost. I, I saw one nothing shootout. I thought it was abs. Maybe it was the other way around. Dude, the abs suck right now. Uh, yeah. I mean, if yeah. if they didn't win that game, I if I was if I was uh, what what day was that? Was that on a Sunday? I think it was, it was last yeah, night. It was last oh, it was last night. night. Yeah. Oh yeah, it yeah. was one nothing or shootout. Yep. But yeah, I mean, like, geez, you take those peepers when you can get them. <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's just, a, I mean, it's a game, but you got you get paid to play, and I'd be flopping all over the place. Dude, that's something like a squirt would have done, you know what I mean? Like a kid that's like right, 12 yeah. years old, like, oh, yeah, rough, that will, you know what I mean? Like that's like being like really like innocent. Yeah, th- that's something you teach like your kids in might or like squirt yeah. hockey. Like, hey, it's all about sportsmanship, do the right thing. But like, that was bizarre. I've never seen anything like that. He's like, no, I didn't get tripped. <laughs> and the ref just took his word for it, too. It was like, oh, okay. <laughs> they are trying to give you whatever, whatever you say, Kale. <laughs> the most Canadian thing of all time. 
Yeah, legit. We're trying really to is. give you a man advantage, Kale, <laughs> so you can score another goal. <laughs> they're like, they're like, Kale, Gary Batman called us. He said we have to rig it for the abs. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> and he goes, no, You're everyone us look bad. Yeah, yeah. He goes, no, we need e- equally on um, playing field, equal playing field. If the <laughs> Islanders work harder than us, they deserve it. <laughs> Kale McCarr must have just must have been the holiday spirit. And it's like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to be a good guy. And uh, I'm, I'm going to say the honest thing and say I wasn't tripped. <laughs> oh, and here's my girlfriend's number, too. Yeah. <laughs> she, just, she just started saying some crazy shit. Take yeah, yeah, yeah Matt Bozzo. a good time. <laughs> yeah, Matt Bozzo. Here's my, my sister, too. <laughs> He probably already been there. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think you gotta give him a car the lady bang after that. I think it's on lock. Yeah. It sounds like he he's wants, trying hard for that. He just wants to add another trophy to the mantle. That's probably an, that's an easy ass trophy to get too. Just don't take any penalties. Yeah, and and, and just rescind calls that's yeah. against the other team. Unbelievable. What a world we're living in. All right, uh, a couple quick hitters before we move on. Uh, Alex Ovechkin of the Washington Capitals scored his 800th career goal in prime OV fashion by netting a hat trick last Tuesday night against the Blackhawks. Uh, he passes Gordy Howe to become second on the NHL's all-time scoring list and is now 95 goals away from passing the great Wayne Gretzky. Uh, Philadelphia Flyers' Cam Atkinson will undergo neck surgery and miss the remainder of the season. Uh, Edmonton Oilers have signed goaltender Stuart Skinner to a three-year extension worth $2.6 million per year. Uh, New York Rangers got the high slot bump last week as they've extended their win streak to a season-best seven straight wins after we ragged on them. Uh, and, <laughs> Nasty. and then lastly, uh, the Vegas Golden Knights defenseman Alex Petrangelo is back with the team after his daughter's recovery with encephalitis. Um, which created a lesion on her brain. Um, scary stuff, but but glad to see his daughter Evelyn is on the road to recovery, and great to see um, uh, Petrangelo back on the ice for Vegas. Uh, any of those topics you boys want to hit on quickly? Yeah, I'll touch on the Petrangelo one. I didn't know it was that like bad. Like I heard about the whole like personal reasons thing, but like it's it's great news that she's oh, she's all good and he's back playing. But that's scary stuff, especially during the holidays. I know. Yeah, they kept that pretty ho hum. I saw he was out, and it was like undisclosed or something. I'm like, oh, he must must have caught one, you know, um, on the on the lower end, and got a stinger. But yeah, when I heard the story about his daughter, is four years old, um, with with this whatever encephalitis, never even heard of it. But I looked it up. I guess it can cause you to like lose your motor skills, and I guess she couldn't even open her eyes for a few days, but. But she's back home now, walking around and everything. So it sounds like it's all good. But yeah, definitely scary stuff. Yeah, it's not good. I'd uh, like to touch on the Cam Atkinson news. Uh, another guy that just said "fuck it" when t- uh, torts. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm taking the rest. Of, I'm, I'm not getting yeah. on the ice of the torts. Yeah, he just like he just makes up that he has to get a surgery. He saw Hazy get benched, and he's just like, "What? Am I next? I'm out of here." <laughs> yeah, but yeah, good time to uh, get that neck surgery the doctor recommended three years ago. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> it's not even like that much of a, like it's not even a major surgery. Yeah. He doesn't even need it. He's just getting it. Yeah, I'll just uh, I'll set this one out, boys. Yeah, Best I'm of get, luck. I'm see getting you boys that. Next year. Yeah, I'm getting that jack. I go. Oh, I'll see you guys later. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, also we also got to touch on the Ovi. Uh, yep. legendary shit right there, rock star shit. Uh, yeah, dude, Ovi's just the man. Like, he, he just scores, dude. He's just a machine out there. Just go. He was in the Ovi office, fucking top of the circles. That's a rip. He's built like he should be in a men's league. Just sits out front. And Imagine him at Quincy him. Youth or Shea Rink on a Tuesday night, dude. He'd oh. have like ten goals. At like, it, he looks like Scotty McPherson out there, just ripping pucks on that. <laughs> Yeah, it just has an absolute bullet. Like, it has a barrel. Else. Goalie, <laughs> goalie's cross eyed, can't even see it. Yeah, built like a fucking construction worker. <laughs> like... Yeah. But yeah, yeah like, I know. He's he such a savage, dude. In fact, he had a hat trick to reach 800. And yeah, just the way he plays the game, like, if you really watch him closely, like, he literally plays zero defense. Like he doesn't back check whatsoever. No. no one, no one gives a shit. And like, then he just like pucks in the back of the net, Ovi. Yeah, then you, if you're in the corner. Like, and he's on the ice, you better watch out because he's coming in and he's going to smoke you from behind no matter where. It's You're not going to see it. He's just going to throw his 250-pound frame on you. on skates. Oh, yeah. But when he knocked that guy in the bench, it was nuts. 
Yeah, yeah. Remember when he Taking fought out the trash? Yeah. <laughs> Remember yeah. when he fought Snatchkov? If Snatchkov wanted to fight him and he got absolutely buried. Yeah, he slept him. Yeah, he put him in the dirt. Oh my god. Yeah, Snatchkov had to get like carried off the ice. His nose was going like four <laughs> different ways. It was crazy. Yeah. It was Russian on Russian crime. Right yeah, Putin, Putin was like, no, no, it never happened again. <laughs> yeah. Everyone just like, whoa, 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 I'm not getting involved in this. Let, let, let Ovi handle this. Jesus, yeah. Let the young man learn a lesson. He definitely one, learned a lesson. Buck- a little one-two, buckle your shoe, guys knocked out. <laughs> How's your sister? <laughs> yeah. He probably ne- never will fight again after oh, that. Ovechkin. I don't think he did. Ovechkin's on the seafood diet. <laughs> He's just chilling, <laughs> knocking people out. <laughs> humming like seven dr peppers after each period no doesn't he like drink like coca-cola like he puts it like in his like water bottle or something like that i I mean that's that's nasty i'd do that and he put dip between his toe like he would cut the like between his toes like slice them a little bit i heard that and he puts dip in between them so he can get like the juices flowing which is psycho it sounds like it hurts i'm about to do that for my next quincy college game yeah, yeah, let us know how it works out. Dude, like Coco hears me just screaming from the locker room. <laughs> yeah, Bob, Bob did buy a 10 last night. He might try it tonight. Yeah, I relapsed. <laughs> I relapsed back. <laughs> oh, man. It's that time of year again. I, uh, Copenhagen. <laughs> oh, let's go. Karen, if you listen to this, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh God, getting sentimental over there. No, because oh, of Car- no, no, because of because Car- of Colonel come like listens to this and hears that he's gonna fucking. He's gonna rip. He's gonna rip me a new one. Yeah, the, I can just Watch see out. the jaw, uh, jaw cancer. I can just see it. <laughs> Watch out, Bob's back on his bullshit. Yeah, demon time. <laughs> All right, let's get into a little mass high school hockey roundup from the last week. Um, so we had a big time tilt in Division One. It was number one St. John's Prep versus number three Hingham. Um, they met in their first big game of the young season, and the action did not disappoint as the teams played to a 2-2 standoff. Aiden Holland and Will Van Sicklin had the goals for the prep, while Alex uh, or, or Zavik and Michael Garrity counted for the Upperman. Uh, both teams are 1-0-1 on the season. Um, other action in D1, number 6 BC High took on Don Bosco Prep from New Jersey. BCI opened the season with a 3-3 tie against the New Jersey powerhouse, Don, Bar- Don Roscoe Prep, Chris Brennick, Dave Williams, and Joe Feinberg for the Eagles, uh, and Luke O'Sullivan chipped in with a pair of assists. Local guys, number four, Braintree, improved to 2-0 with a 3-1 beating of Walpole, Brian Rizzo, and Larry Graziano. Each contributed a goal and assist. Nick Fasano also had a goal for the Womps. And lastly, in D1 action, number eight, Belmont, was down 2 nothing early but stormed back to post a 6-2 win over Melrose. Camp East and Shea Donahue both scored twice for the Marauders. Adam Bauer, or sorry, Adam Bauer and Sean Noon each had a goal. Con he had both goals for Melrose. Uh, boys, what are your thoughts on the D1 action from the past week? The Womp Show and O for the South Shore. Let's go. 2-0, yeah, yeah, number four in the state. Shore, South Shore battle. Nasty. <laughs> That's cool, man. They're, they're two and zero to start the year, and they're number four in the state. That's pretty sick. The Womps. Yeah, o- always nice to see the South Shore teams beat up on the North Shore teams. I mean, it's just it's a known fact. I mean, South Shore is better than the North Shore. You can't can't argue it. I don't care what those North Shore scumbags have to say about it. But they smoke mids. They, the they smoke <laughs> mids up up north. <laughs> Smoking that Reggie Bush up there. <laughs> Midi. But yeah, uh, the big matchup, like St. John's and uh, Hingham, was a big one. Two-two tie. That seemed like a seemed like a big time tilt. And then you know, BC High just going out and playing like these like unheard of schools from New Jersey that are just like unreal. It's just such a BC High move. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, dude, nasty. Yeah, yeah, they're like, oh, no one's good enough to play us, so we're gonna venture out. Yeah, like... ex- exactly. Yeah, we're gonna play to in Alaska that. real quick. Yo, the Bruins. Yeah. Yo, the Bruins are on the road. Uh, we gotta find somebody else. But <laughs> it's like we're getting bored over here. I mean, hey, they're only number six this year, so and they're not as good as they think. Hey. All right, let's talk about some uh, D two action. Uh, big time matchup in the Patriot League. Uh, Silver Lake number three took on number four Duxbury. Um, a goal by Brandon Cavici with 24 seconds left gave Silver Lake a 4-3 win over Duxbury in a key Division II clash. Uh, the Lakers trailed this one 3-1 early in the third period. 
Pat Murphy, Liam Tompkins, and Ben Cronin also had goals, and defenseman Aiden Dunphy chipped in with three assists. Boys, what's your thought on the big win from the Lakers? We might be a Laker podcast. Might be we the, might, talked about them last week. It might be the Lake Show, dude. It might be <laughs> yeah. the Lake Show. That's nasty. They were down 3-1 to one, ended up winning. Yeah, against Duxbury. That's too. sick, that's dude. A, Showtime that's Lakers. That's a big win. <laughs> yeah, dude. Duxbury has like, always been like rolling with an iron fist in the D2 um, sector, too. So that's huge. Yeah. You, you love to see it. The Silver Lake, the football players on skates just must have bullied <laughs> the Duxbury Dragons around and uh, came back, won, stormed back, won it 4-3. The, the fucking Lakers. The Magic Dragons. <laughs> we said we're going to be keeping a close eye on Silver Lake this year. They were our dark horse, and, hey, they're proving us right so far. The Lake Show, baby. <laughs> yeah, I saw a future on the Lake Show. I don't want it at all the other day. Oh, let, I'm hammering it. Yeah. The, money, the full... money's shifting after the <laughs> other night. <laughs> Plus 700. It's a steal. <laughs> Welcome to the Lake Show. Our other action in D2 this week, number one, Tewksbury went to 2-0 on the season with a 6 nothing shutout over Newton South. Jeremy and Sonia led the way with two goals, while Connor Kremen, Andrew Wynett, Ryan Flynn, and Tyler Barnes each added a goal apiece. Number two, Canton power- powered their way to their second straight win with a 3-1 uh, dub over Barnstable. Junior Brandon Torgi scored just a minute into the game while Travis Thomas scored his first career goal, and A.J. Thomas gave the Bulldogs an insurance goal late in the third period. Number seven, Norwood took down Ashland 3-0, where junior goalie Zach Badger earned his first varsity win with a 20-save shutout, um, and junior Andrew Gillis led the attack with two goals, and Eddie Carroll added the other. Lastly, number six, Hopkinton improved to 3-0 with a 7-1 beatdown over Holliston, uh, Pivot, uh, Pavit Meher or Mera and Cam McPherson each had two goals, while Joe Carraza, Joe Scardino, and Isaac Peterson each had one. Senior goalie Jack Lang had the win in net. Any uh, any comments on any of those matchups across D two boys? Anything, Benny? Canton still being a wagon, always as always, always and forever. <laughs> Yeah, we talked about Canton. How about they've always been a powerhouse. Um, Barnstable played them tight, though. Got to give them credit. So, yeah, Barnstable could be a team to watch um, in the near future as well, hanging in there with Canton. The stable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, D3 action. We have a new number one in D3. No surprise. It's Hanover. Um, they're now 2-0. The defending MIAA Division Three state champions moved into the top spot after opening the season with wins over Plymouth South three to one, and d- don't even mention the next one. The next one, you don't. Think. <laughs> oh, it's racist. <laughs> we'll skip that uh, result. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, Linfield uh, moves moves their way up to second after Cape Ann League wins over Amesbury and Triton. Situate former number one has now dropped down to number three. They're the preseason number one, um, moving to three after splitting their first four games. They defeated Norwood and Quincy five to three each, um, but they lost to Norwell four three and Pembroke also four three. A uh, couple new teams that entered the top ten: Nosset. They had an impressive start. They're three and zero now. Uh, earned the number eight spot. The team has scored twenty three goals in their first three wins, and they have, yeah. they have a rematch with Nantucket scheduled for this Friday. And uh, Neshoba Regional also entered the top ten. They're three zero and one. Um, the Central Mass team enters the week at number nine. Uh, Neshoba has only allowed four goals in their first four games. Wow! So buzzing in D three this week, boys. What are your thoughts? Dude, Nasa, 23 goals in three games is crazy. That's so many goals. Shooter tutor? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it said they played Nantucket. It's usually got a pretty decent team. Um, but, yeah, that offense is on fire, man. 23 goals in three games. Neshoba on the opposite end, just as impressive, only allowing four goals in four games. They must have a stud goal. Attack. Yeah, or just a nasty decor. Either one. Yeah. Either one. And uh, no surprise to see Hanover back in the one spot. Not sure why Hanover was not one in the preseason. They won the state championship last year. That kind of made no sense to me, but uh, they've reclaimed their spot rightfully so. Yeah, pretty quick too. Pretty um, convincing wins too. No hangover for Hanover. No, (laughs) never. You kidding me? (laughs) Those Hanover guys, those are good guys. Yeah, they don't drink. (laughs) <laughs> uh, lastly, D4. 
Uh, D4 action this week. Norwell has, um, you know, lived up to the number one spot. They've continued the hot start to the season. They had a 4-1 win. Uh, West East Water. Kevin Leary led the way with two goals, and Matt Cerruti and Nolan Petroselli each had one to improve the Clippers to 4-0 on the season. Number two, Sandwich, the defending Division Four champions, had a strong week, earning two wins. Uh, first, the Blue Knights took down Middleborough 10-0, where Chris Cardillo had an amazing seven goals in that game. Jeez. And then they beat Nantucket 2-1. Uh, Colin McIver had both of those goals. Uh, Dennis Yarmouth, got to give the Cape Towns a shout-out. Uh, they improved to 3-0 and on the season with a big win over Martha's Vineyard. Got goals from John Valerio, Aiden Powers, Aiden O'Reilly, and Robbie McPhee led the way, while Cole Runesville had 20 saves in net with the shutout. And lastly, number four, Winthrop powered its way to a big 3-2 overtime win over Danvers, who is Division Two, I believe. Jack Hayes had the game-winning goal, while Phil Boncour and Peter Silverman added the others. Uh, any thoughts on the D4 action? You got anything, Vinny? Uh uh, I heard one. I forgot what you said, but I I can't think of which one it was. Who goes? Was it the uh, uh, sandwich sandwich kid scoring seven goals? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. like that's more of like just like kick him. Just like pretty much he's not he's dead. He's dead. You just like kill him. Yeah. It's like he's Stop dead. He's fight. dead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stop the fight. He's dead. Yeah. Pretty much. It's one like, of the bosses. Yeah, that's the one. The seven goals. That's crazy. Like, uh, you just I don't know how you manage. To, to score seven goals in a game that's yeah I mean, that sounds like a sh- lot shout out chris cardillo cardillo seven goals it sounded like he could be playing one on five and they still would have beat this middleborough team i mean that's impressive seven genos hats off have yourself a night young man hell yeah no, right. it's got to be Hazard. a record <laughs> Honestly, I was thinking it, but I wouldn't be surprised, man, back in the day if there's some kid who's putting up a oh. turning game. You know? <laughs> like, oh, for sure. Blue House Vault Tech, some kid probably put up like 15 in one game or something. There you go, yeah. <laughs> probably had a triple hattie, nine goals. In the first period. <laughs> All right, that's our Mass High School Hockey Roundup this week. We'll uh, keep you updated next week on the premier matchups across the state. All right, we're going to get into a little fancy draft, and since it's the holiday season... We're going to do a little fantasy draft here. Best holiday movies. Best holiday movies is the category. I got a random generator right here. Going to randomize the order for us, see who will be picking in what order. Give me one sec. Hopefully you boys got some good movies on the list. Yep. Because I know I do. All right. Generating draft order. The order will be, I got number one overall. Bob will be second. Snipsky will be third. As always, snake-style draft. All Let's right. do it. I, I guess I'm it. on the clock. Let's go. You got to be locked and loaded. I guess I'm on the clock here. You know, there's a big debate. What's the best Christmas movie? I did not want to be drafted in this spot, to, to be honest with you. This <laughs> you got to set the tone. could have been in. But set, set the tone. I got to go with my personal favorite in an instant classic, A Christmas Story. Yeah, to me. that's, that's, that's respectable. Story. I mean, it's on 24-7 on Christmas Day for a reason. It's it's just a timeless classic. I mean, you know, you'll shoot your eye out, kid. You <laughs> yeah, know? And then Red his Rifle. Buddy, <laughs> yeah, the, the Red Rocket Rifle, and then his buddy Flick there getting triple dog dared to go lick the pole. Yeah, his, all the time. Getting his stuck on the pole is classic. No, the, the most underrated part of that movie is when um his little brother, like his, his mom, like puts him like in like a, a massive coat, like a bunch of layers. <laughs> yeah. I can't put my arms down. And, yeah. like that. and he's like walling over and he falls over and shit. Yeah, it keeps falling to the snowbank, and they have to keep picking them up. Yeah, yeah. that shit's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, and the, the dad, the dad went in the uh, the lady's leg lamp. Yeah, fragile. <laughs> it must be it. Italian. <laughs> And, just and posting it in the middle of the window he's like out in the street like all the neighbors are coming out to look at <laughs> yeah, it yeah yeah, yeah right. and, like, and then when um look at that thing when the um when they're driving and like the uh, the car breaks down and like the, the oh, tire gets popped yeah. and then like whatever he's helping his dad out and he drops like a he drops like the like uh the nut or whatever he and he just goes like the, yeah, Fudge. <laughs> yeah but he actually said the f word and then his dad's like what and then whatever and then they put the soap in his mouth 
<laughs> yeah, and then the worst part is he rats out his friend. His mom's like, where'd you hear that word? And oh, he rats yeah. Out his buddy. And then she's on the phone with the kid's mom. Yeah, he lies. Though, right? out. Yeah, and he gets rinsed. And he gets fucked up by his parents. <laughs> what a snitch. Yeah, Ralph right. A snitch. <laughs> and raise no snitch. Yeah. But yeah, so many classic scenes from that movie. So yeah, I had to go with Christmas Story, number one overall. Bob, second pick, you're on the clock. All right, so growing up, every single, especially at Marymount Elementary School, I know a lot of people that maybe are listening to this went to the same middle school, I mean, elementary school as me, but every year in the gymnasium, always sauced on Polar Express. Always yeah. sauced that one on. Uh, <laughs> like I'm, calling, I'm, naming, I'm, I'm taking that for my first pick because it, it just near and dear to my heart. I think it's a sick movie, too. It, the graphics are unbelievable, too. It was way ahead of its time. Polar yeah. Express. Full Express, Tom Hanks. Yeah, Tom Hanks yeah. is the conductor. Savage. Yeah, that, that one does hit home a little bit. Yeah, every year for uh, right before winter break, we'd be huddling up in our PJs. Hot chocolate. Cocoa. Yeah, ready, ready for Polar Express. <laughs> nasty. Such a nasty movie. Yeah, I, I love that one. Tom Hanks is classic in that. It, it, it's it's not it's like it's so sad too. That's the thing. Yeah, it's super like, sad. It, it really uh, tugs at the strings there. Yeah, hard strengths. I might, I might I might fire yeah. it up when I get back to the apartment after this. Get yourself a bottle of wine, some Polar Express. Honestly, some, that's some some, P, some P Hub. <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> this is a kids show. <laughs> Jesus, you just ruined it. We're done. <laughs> We're canceled. It's over. Yeah, cancel the show. All right, Snipsky, why don't you give us yours? <laughs> you got back to back. Vinny's back like Lisa show. and Christmas special. Yeah. <laughs> Snipsy's got uh, back to back. Yeah, so uh this I'm gonna go with Jingle All the Way. Uh Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, that is a good one. Yeah, I love that movie. Uh and then I'm gonna go with the uh regular Santa Claus, Tim Allen. Tim oh, Allen? Yeah. Timmy yeah, Allen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love those are two of my favorite uh Christmas movies. Pretty I funny mean, too. <laughs> I, I might get roasted for this, but I've never seen Jingle All the Way. No? Oh, it's comedy. No, You'll like you like it. That yeah, is a good it's You'll a good like, flick. Yeah. I gotta watch it. Yeah. I'm probably gonna get roasted for that, but <laughs> never seen it. But but Santa Claus is on rail. He he's just turning into Santa. He's like, what the fuck's going on? Yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. He bad. falls off. He, he fall- keeps shaving and then he's just growing his beard back. Yeah, yeah, the next morning. Yeah, he knocks Santa off the roof. He like kills Santa and then he yeah. like <laughs> falls off comes off the roof and puts on the uh the Santa costume and becomes Santa. Yeah. That's yeah. classic too. Nasty. I, I just watched that the other day too. Hell yeah, that's a classic. I, I that's my how good I forgot how good of a movie that was. When he, he's at his uh, kid's soccer game and he's sitting on the bench and then the little girl comes over and thinks he's Santa and the next thing you know he's got a line full of kids lined up like waiting to come sit right. on his lap. Yeah, and he's like, what the fuck? Yeah. They just they just know the vibe. They just know he's Santa. And his wife's just like looking at him like, what are you, like, why is like all these kids trying to like... Yeah, yeah you, she's you pedophile. Yeah, she's like, what? she's like, yeah, like that's yeah. an awful look. Like, what's going on? Like, Jeez, yeah, she probably thought he was dead like... Yeah, right. <laughs> Uncle Diddle. Uncle Diddle. <laughs> Uncle Diddle. Uh, all right, Bob, I think that's back over to you for your second pick. I'm shocked this actually fell back to me, but the movie Elf. Yeah, that's a good Will one. Will Ferrell. Oh, yeah. You can't go wrong with that on one. List. Yeah, that is I a steal. That is a steal. Yeah, and honestly, I'm wearing the Elf outfit right now, but yeah. dude, that, that movie is sick. That, like, the, the part when he, uh, when he has like the, um, the spaghetti <laughs> and then he puts like maple syrup <laughs> and like M&Ms on it and shit, it's unbelievable. Oh, my God. But I also saw, dude, I saw this like on um, – instagram or something like that there's there's a deleted scene from that movie that's him playing hockey really Really? yeah dude it's it's a pretty good scene too like he's just like they're playing like a pickup um pawn hockey and whatever and he's sitting there and like his team's getting rinsed and they're like buddy get out there he's like all right he goes in there and just like bodying everyone like whatever because he's way bigger than everyone (laughs) and he he ripped a slap shot and hit some and then like um it it ripped off like the crossbar and like hit him in the face and he knocked him out it's a good scene (laughs) it got deleted though which is bullshit but Ah, oh, how'd that make the final cut? I don't know. The movie was a, was immaculate though. They probably they probably had so many like like tough decisions because every scene's yeah. sick in that movie. Yeah, it is. That that that's a great one too. I'm surprised that did fall this far. I had it on my list, but I had one in front of it, and I'm I'm glad it fell to me. I wanted it in this spot. I'm surprised none of you took it. It's National Lampoon's. Christmas oh Day yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one too, yeah, dude. There's so many good movies. <laughs> There's so oh, many yeah. good movies. 
The holiday movies are the best. But, dude, National Lampoon's is, is Christmas Vacation is so fucking funny. The Griswolds, Clark Griswold, Chevy <laughs> Chase in that movie. Nasty. And then Cousin Eddie. Yep. Cousin Eddie's the best character by far. <laughs> when when he's outside on Christmas morning, emptying the uh, <laughs> tank from his from his toilet to the RV, <laughs> he's just spraying it in the street. He's like, "Merry Christmas, shitters full." <laughs> and he, and he, he's just crushing a beer and smoking a stove. <laughs> so nasty. Yeah, like he's nasty. in like his robe. Everyone's like, "What the fuck is this guy doing?" Yeah, <laughs> and then the scene too with Chevy Chase. He's like Christmas shopping. And he sees that smoke show, and he like doesn't know how to talk to her. He's like, "Oh, it's, it's a bit uh, nipply out." He's like, "Oh, I, I mean, I mean, I mean nipply." <laughs> <laughs> nipply. <laughs> that's nasty. That movie's that movie's comedy. Oh my god! That's... All right, is, is it me again? Because I went first. I get back to back here. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Right. All right. Yeah. Yep. And then you guys close it out. Um. Yo, know, this one's going to be controversial. Some people are probably going to disagree with me on it. Um, I'm going Die Hard. No, I that's know not. It. No. I know it. <laughs> no, I'm going. It is a Christmas movie. No, it isn't, dude. I, I'm, on <laughs> team, a, I'm on team anti-Christmas movie. Like that's, They're at a Christmas party at the beginning of the movie. That's No. <laughs> I'm going Die Hard, Bruce. Yeah, Willis. yeah. Miracle that wasn't during Christmas too. That was not a Christmas movie. They had a Christmas scene in there. Yeah, it was just a scene. It wasn't Die like Hard the was setting of the Christmas, movie. Die Hard was on Christmas Day. All right. It's a Christmas movie. I'm putting it on there. It's a controversial one. Yippee Kaye, motherfucker. Coco. Die if, Hard. Coco. If my aunt had a dick, she'd be my uncle. <laughs> That, that, that's all. That's all I gotta there. say about Die Hard being a Christmas movie. <laughs> I'm standing by it. Die Hard. All right. Christmas movie. We'll let the people in the comments decide. I'm going Christmas movie. That's that's my final three. Christmas story, National Lampoon, Die Hard. All right, Bob, over to you, and then Snipsy closes out. All right, th- I can't believe this fell back. Uh, this song far too. The Grinch. Yeah, The Grinch. So, Which one? The first one. The first one's not- like the animated one. Like that, the first. No, one. no, no. Like the no, like the the Jim Carrey one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. 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 Like the yeah, the, the, the one we grew up on. One. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, they have like a cartoon version of it. That's the first yeah. one. Oh, yeah, then that, the, then the second. Well, I never even seen one. the fucking cartoon one. No, nah, you, <laughs> you, you have. You have. You have. You have. That thing's just but, like been on. That's like christmas story it's just on tv yeah yeah i yeah, know but i didn't i probably haven't sat down and watched the whole like duration of it i watched the, it's like yeah. narrate it's, it's like not, it's not that good it, it's not but it's like a cl- it's narrated it's not even like yeah he right. doesn't even like they don't even talk actually but. yeah yeah so you, yeah you got i was gonna say you gotta go with the with the uh jim carrey one yeah, you, you got you, you guys confuse the shit out of me i'm like wait there's another yeah. one. <laughs> oh, oh there's like multiple sure. there's more than two <laughs> um i'm gonna close it out uh, with Home Alone. Oh my God! I didn't even think about oh grabbing yeah. Home Alone. Home Alone. How fucking dumb I am I? It. That's crazy. <laughs> I knew it was there, but I'll be honest. I'm not big on Home Alone. Something about Macaulay Culkin creeps me out. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm not big on it. Yeah, his little hiatus of Michael Jackson, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's probably it. But yeah, everything's so just like gimmicky in that. It's like oh, I, I don't know. It's a good kids movie. I'm not gonna hate on it. Dude, imagine that. leaving your kid. Classic. Imagine leaving your kid at home like four times. <laughs> like, I don't know how that kid wasn't in DSS. How does that keep happening? How's that kid not in DSS? Like, what what That's are we what doing? I'm here? saying, yeah. Like the first one's good, but then like the next four, it's like, what's going on? You the kid should be in a New fucking York group City. home. Like he should be have a leash on or something, dude. If you keep losing them. Yeah, right. Put put some bells on them. <laughs> Handcuff them to you or something. Like you can't lose your kid four separate times. Like that's absurd. Do Do you think <laughs> the amount of times they left him at home alone that like someone probably watched that movie and was like, oh, I'm gonna make leashes for kids. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know what I mean? And then and then like fucking ten years later, you see a bunch of like that's the most asinine thing I've ever seen. Is like fucking like babysitters or whatever have like a group of kids and put them on leashes. <laughs> It makes yeah. me want to get on my car and just like free them. Just like just like take <laughs> take awful. scissors and like cut it, cut the leashes. Like run, run. <laughs> but yeah, woke parents are the parents from home alone. Like they should be locked up, thrown in a cell. <laughs> yeah, for real. All right, there you have it. Our best holiday movies. We'll throw it up on social media. Have the fans vote. I'm sure I'm gonna get some hate for the Die Hard one, but I'm standing by it. All right, final segment of the night, our gambling corner. To recap last week's records, 
Bob and myself were three and two. Snipsky two and three. Overall, solid week from the boys. No one completely shit the bed. You love what you love to see. <laughs> we're all still in the race. Uh, Evander came in still in first, 22, 21, and one, hitting at 51%. Bob, 19 and 21, 48%. And Snipsky, 18 and 23, 44%. We're all in the same ballpark there. So st- still a close race. A lot of picks left to give. Before we get into our picks this week, I just wanted to give a little gambling NHL teams naughty nice list so far this season. Some teams that have been good to me, some teams that have been not so good. So I'll start with the naughty list. The team that's absolutely on there 100%, and the only team that's made the high slot shit list this year, it's the Ottawa Senators. Yep. Don't bet this team. Don't don't even touch a game that involves this team because <laughs> you bet on a money line, they lose. You bet against them, they win. You bet the over, they go under. They're actually one of the league's worst um, with overs. They're 12 and 19 on the under this year, Jeez. which is surprising because I, I feel like they're a team that lets up a lot of goals, but I, I guess they don't. So sends, naughty list, stay away from the auto centers. Don't even waste your time. Another team I got on the naughty list, Minnesota Wild. Not worth betting. They've been hot lately, but they're always like a minus like 300, minus 250 favorite. There's no sense in betting on them in that in that matter. And then if you bet again, that they win, like even if you're getting the high odds. So Minnesota Wild, stay away from them. They're another team too. Every time I bet an over with the Wild, it, it goes under. So um, Minnesota Wild, Naughty list. Uh, another team, I've been fading them all year. They've actually been kind of good to me, but from a Ben standpoint, don't go near them. Florida Panthers, they are trash. Don't go near the Panthers. They're super inconsistent. A le- they're a league worst, boys. 11 and 22 on the puck line this year. Jeez. League worst. They're not making anyone any sorts of money. Panthers, get out of here. Naughty list. They're getting cold. And then lastly, Jeez. I got I got three more teams. Uh, Blue Jackets, just a trash team. Mm-hmm. Don't don't waste your time with the Jackets. Uh, the Canucks, the Canucks are always for some reason like like a pick them, and you just you bet against them every time and you win. I've done it the past like three nights and they've been getting rinsed. I, I don't know why the Canucks are ever favored or why they're even like even money that they should not be. The, the Canucks stink. Mm-hmm. And then lastly, a team I actually like, but um, just hasn't been doing well since the start of the season. It's the Red Wings. Uh, they're, they're always a dog and they always have good value, but th- they never come through. I actually had them last night, last leg of a parlay. They blew the first it. two hit. Red Wings went to OT. They do. They hit like post. They had like a bunch of chances, and then they let up a goal with like twenty seconds left in OT, and they screwed my part. Well, the goal they let up was kind of nasty, though. Yeah, it was a sick one, T. But just that overtime was brutal. They'd be like all over and buzzing, and then they turn it over, and then be like a three on one. You're like, what are we doing? Yeah, yeah. And then then Huso was bailing them out, but then finally they got one by him. But uh, yeah, Red Wings haven't been a good team to bet on. I, I'm Coco. Um, I'm surprised you didn't mention your Flames. Yeah, you know, the Flames probably should be on the naughty list. I've just been staying away from them. I, I, I can't trust them. So they're kind of – they just didn't make either list. They they absolutely but. screwed me last week, this past week. <laughs> yeah. Dude, yeah, they I'm like learn- – their D zone was so bad, dude. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah I've kind of learned just to just ignore them in the market um, from a Ben standpoint. Just, just don't even look at that game. Don't, don't look at the odds. Don't touch it because they'll probably lose – but if you bet against them, they'll probably win. So, yeah, the Flames could definitely be on the naughty list. Um, going to my nice list, got to go with the Boston Bruins. League best, 22-9 and nine on the puck line this year. How are you? Um, wasn't until lately I started riding the Bruins. I should have done it a lot sooner in the year. I was a little late to the party on that. But uh, Bruins have always been good to me. They haven't let me down yet. Uh, one of my favorite teams, probably the top of my nice list, Buffalo Sabres. Buffalo Sabres are hefty dogs night in, night out, and they keep winning. Uh, Take the Sabres. Also take the Sabres overs because they're leading the league in goals. I also have uh, the Jets, Kraken, and the Kings. Jets Jets have been hot, especially at home. Bet on the Jets when they're at home. 
Kraken. Yeah, you know we love us some crack on this podcast. So yeah, always bet the Kraken. I'm uh, high Kings, on crack. Kings are a good team to bet too. And then uh, <laughs> Oilers. Oilers are league best, twenty-one, ten, and two on the over. Just hammer Oilers overs. It's gonna go over. Jack Campbell stinks, and then uh, McDavid, Drysdale are gonna put up like two apiece. Oh, and almost forgot. Nice list. Uh, the the Yotes. The Yotes are always a scrappy dog, never out of any game. If you take the Yotes on the puck line, they'll probably hit because they'll probably lose an OT. Uh, you can go with the money line if you want and, and hope for the best, but uh, the Yotes, the Yotes are always a good bet. So that's my naughty and nice list for NHL teams gambling-wise so far this year. So maybe we'll uh, maybe take that into consideration when we're doing our picks this week. And two games on Thursday night because there are no games this weekend. I don't know if you boys knew that. Nope. No, nope. no NHL games Christmas. Saturday, Sunday. Uh, they're off until Monday. So we're going to highlight two games on Wednesday night, starting with the New Jersey Devils at the Florida Panthers. Devils, Panthers, Snipsky, we'll start with you. Who are you going with? Uh I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go with the Devils. They just had a bad loss tonight. They're gonna bounce back, beat the Panthers. I am going to go with the over. The over is six and a half, and both these goaltenders let up a lot of goals. Mackenzie Blackwood, he's almost like a, he's almost a three goals against, and then uh, Bobrovsky is a three goals against. Both their save percentages are sub 900, so I like the odds on that. And uh, yeah, that's my pick. If I'm reading these odds right, the Devils are underdogs. Tomorrow. Yeah, I saw that, which is crazy. That's why what I kind of stayed away from it. I don't know if it's a trap <laughs> or not. They that? lost five in a row. Devils. Dude, the, so the Panthers do. stink, though. Yeah, no, the Devils are due here, well, I think. The Devils are 11 and 2 and 1 on the road. That's very good on the road. I think it's a trap, yeah. dude. That's why, like, I saw that earlier. I'm like, yo, them being dogs, I don't know. It, it seems too obvious. But dude. they're not, like, they win all their games on the road, it seems like. Uh, they, they don't lose on the road. So, they, so Vegas is just, like, willingly, like, giving up some free money there? That's crazy. Uh, yeah, dude, that, that seems like a rat to me. That does seem like a rat, but. I smell a rat. I told you the Panthers were on my naughty list, man. They just stink. And I've been betting against them almost all year, and it's been working out. So I'm going to nibble the cheese here. I'm going to go with the bait, and I'm going to take the Devils. Diddle the cheese. I, I, I don't know how the Devils are going to lose another game. I mean, I know they're on a back-to-back, but the Panthers suck, man. I'm, I'm going Devils here. It, it seems like an absolute rat line. The public's probably going to hammer the Devils, but I'm going with it. I don't care. I'm trusting my gut. All right, the other game from Wednesday night we're going to do is Edmonton Oilers at Dallas Stars. Bob, why don't you start us off with that game? Oilers, Stars. Give me Dally. I'm going to roll with the Stars on this one, money line. Dallas at home. I, I like it. Audinger in net. I'm going to go. Is Audie in net? Yeah, Audie's in net against Skinner. <sighs> Skinner's been playing well. Damn. Uh, I'm going to go over still. The Audie, Audie and Skinner and that scares me a little bit, but I think got some high-powered offenses here. I think this game can go over the total. I said it. Edmonton was league best with overs. Dallas usually a pretty good over team is too. Um, give, me the, give me the Oilers, Stars, over. The, um, the, Snip- pub, the public is heavy on uh, Oilers' money line. Ooh. So take that into account. Yeah, the Oilers three games skid. Uh, they lost to Anaheim. Jesus, uh, that's not... bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm just I'm gonna I'm just gonna ride with the Stars at home. Very very good at home. Uh, Oilers look like they're gonna have a tough streak going here. Uh, they should have they shouldn't have a tough uh, these this three game losing streak, but it looks like they're having a tough time uh, keeping the puck out of the net. Yeah, so yeah, those are our two games for Wednesday night. Moving on to Thursday, we got two more games for you, starting off with the Carolina Hurricanes at the Pittsburgh Penguins. I'll start us off on this one. This game is tough, man. Wow. Canes, Pens, two of the hottest teams in the league right now. How'd the Pens go tonight against the Rags? They won. 
Three to two. They won. Oh, what's that? Eight in a row for them. Yeah, I think they're so. hot. Oh, they uh, no, they lost. Against... I'm sorry. They uh they oh no, win? they lost to Carolina the other night. Penguins. Is that what you're talking oh, about? Oh, you're right. They did lose. They did lose the other night. You're right. So street ended. Um, Wow, they lost to Carolina the other night, so I'm gonna have to take them on on Thursday night. Uh, bounce back for the Pens redemption game at home. Give me the Penguins. Snipsky, slap it over to you. Who you got in this one? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna ride the Pens too. Let's go. Little redemption for the Pens after losing to the Canes, Bob. What's it going to be? Jesus Christ. Are we going consensus this early? <laughs> it's never too early. Uh, yeah, fuck it. We'll go over consensus. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling oh, che- let's go. I'm feeling cheerful on this holiday season. <laughs> this beard's making me feel Don't... cheerful. Dude, you know how hey, much fucking hair? Dude, you know how much hair I've just been swallowing for the past hour? Oh, yeah. It's, it's going to cough up my hairball. <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm, I'm fucking... This is gross. This thing's suffocating me. The shit we uh, do for content. <laughs> <laughs> but hey the consensus paid off last week we all hammered the kraken and look how that turned out kraken big dub so, so much hey. crack was smoked that night i smoked oh, a crack yeah, i smoked a planet. victory crack pipe it, oh mine was a victory but yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah mean, that's what i like to call it make myself feel better about myself so the boys are all rolling with the pens that game will be on nhl network on thursday december 22nd the other game we're going to do on Thursday is the Battle of New York, New York Islanders at New York Rangers. Snipsky, we'll start with you. Who do you got? Isles, Rangers. Give me the Islanders. The, the streak also. ends there. It's going to be a hard battle. Rangers aren't built to, uh, to beat the uh, Islanders. Bob, what are you thinking? I'm pretty sure the last time they played each other, the Islanders won. Yeah, Islanders are two and zero against them this year. All right, then there you go, Rangers, baby, Rangers money line. Rangers is my team. That's my New York team. I'm gonna ride with them. I'm rolling with the Rangers too. I like how the Rangers have been playing lately. Um, other than their loss tonight, they were on a seven game heater, but they ran into a hot Pens team. Three uh, two loss. You know, it was a tight one. I like them bouncing back at home against the Islanders. That that's gonna be a that's gonna be a scrappy game. It's going to be back and forth, but I got the Rangers in a close one. All right, last game of the week. It'll be Friday, December 23rd. We got Tampa Bay heading to Buffalo to take on the Sabres. Lightning Sabres, Bob, we'll start with you. Who you got in this one? Uh, I might have just ripped the over on that one because I, I feel like Buffalo scores a lot of goals, and I feel like the Lightning is going to match their intensity. So I, I'll go over on that one. Yeah, I, I like the over there, too. I think that's a good over spot, but I'm going to go with my boys. I'm going to go with the Sabres at home. Tampa got pumped tonight, I think. Did they? Uh, uh, 4-1. 4-1 loss to Toronto. Buffalo's on a four-game heater. Watch out for the Sabres. I'm going to ride the Sabres in this one. Give me Buffalo. Let's go, Buffalo. Snipsky, I'm gonna to close us out. I am got? going to fade and go lightning. Bounce back game. <laughs> okay, it's tough could to be. bet against them. Yeah, no, it is. It could be a game the lightning just absolutely come out pissed off and just pump the brakes on the Sabres. But I think the Sabres got a little swagger to them right now. I like how they've been playing. So we'll see. We'll see how that one uh, turns out. All right, there you have it. There's the gambling corner this week. It's a short week, but... Still providing you with five picks as always. So do what you want with those. Tail us, fade us. Uh, We wish you the best of luck in your betting extravaganza. Um, All right, before we sign off tonight, Bob, fun fact of the day, what do you got for us? In Japan, to celebrate Christmas, they go to KFC for their dinner. Actually? Yeah. Yeah. That's like traditional. <laughs> yeah, I lived there for two years. KFC's, I've seen it. KFC's cashing out on Christmas Eve, huh? Yeah, dude. Because there's KFC, like KFC's and uh, McDonald's, like everywhere in um, Japan, especially in Tokyo. 
They're all over the place, like every corner. 7-Eleven as well. Why do they do that? I don't know. Just they love KFC. Dude, American shit's so big over there. Like, just American, just like like any food, any fast food, any convenient shit. Like, 7-Eleven's on every single corner. It's open 24-7. So. Hey, they're doing it the right way, if you ask me. Give me KFC for dinner nine days out of the week. <laughs> yeah, right, I'll dude. take it. <laughs> and, the, and the thing is too like over in japan everything's so much more like they do it better over there like it's just like obviously they have japanese workers and the way that like, they make their food like there's like the mcdonald's has like a teriyaki burger and they have like crazy other shit they have like wow. yeah, KFC, they, kfc has like i've been really i've been to the kfc once it, like the chicken definitely tastes a little different it's, but it's probably dog yeah. or something gourmet <laughs> <laughs> oh, no but uh the freshest yeah. feline they could find out on the street <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was but, gonna say their fast food must be like some gourmet shit. Yeah, something. gourmet is, shit. Is it expensive? No, or no, like no. Yet the yen's way cheaper than the American dollar. Yeah. What, what's like a price for like like fast food out there though? Is it like similar? Like do they have like dollar menu and shit, or is it? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. They have like pricier? cheaper stuff. Yeah, they have the cheaper menu yeah. and everything. Yeah, it's like kind of the same thing. Yeah. Oh, maybe it word. is dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cat. <laughs> Seeing oh, a rat. Man. I would just stick to the sushi out there. Yeah, you can't go wrong with the sushi, dude. (laughs) Go to a sushi go-around, dude. Have that conveyor belt. Stack up like 10 plates of sushi and it only costs you like $7. It's unbelievable. Yeah, that sounds like my kind of night. Couple sake bombs mixed in there too. Yeah. Just (laughs) get get out so you're rinsed. Going out of there (laughs) cross-eyed. You you see me laying on the conveyor belt. Yeah. (laughs) Just hammered. Just sleeping. Going through it. Like, sir, this is an establishment. No, but the Japanese do. They hate confrontation, so they probably just let you do it. They, they just wait until <laughs> you, like, wake up. <laughs> they would just put the plates of sushi on me. Yeah, on yeah, for real. <laughs> That's probably what they would do. As I'm passed out. Yeah. It's all about the wad, dude. You can't break the wad out there. No. The zen, right? <laughs> no, no. That's literally what it is. Vinny's laughing like I just made that up. No, no, no. The wad the is like the, the peace. It's like that's the, yeah. that's a word for peace. Don't break the peace. The harmony. Yeah, sounds like they. I know you're just trying to say law. No, wa, w a, the wa. Wa. That's what I was waiting All right. for. <laughs> All right. As always, we'd like to thank our producer, Mass Music Radio. They continue to produce music for the masses. So if you haven't already, be sure to go check them out in their other featured podcasts at www.massmusicradio.com. That's www.massmusicradio.com. All right. I think that just about wraps it up. We hope you enjoyed today's episode, our holiday special. Thank you for tuning in to the High Slot Podcast. Be sure to go check us out on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, at High Slot Podcast for more daily hockey content. Thanks, everyone, and happy holidays. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays. Peace.